Hey guys, thought I'd do a little update since I've been kind of missing in action. And I thought I'd let my dragon face pipefish be the opening act. Um, really like this guy. He's very interesting and I think he watches me as much as I watch him. And that's when he's not hunting down pods. But he's doing real well. And yes, you see a little bubble algae on that frag rack. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> but let's talk about these snail eggs that I've had on the glass for a week. They are column bellied snails, which is kind of like a mini conch, and its common name is nano conch, believe it or not. Not because it's a conch that you can only have in a nano tank, but just basically because it's a small conch. But the eggs are now starting to show multiple dots inside where they weren't before. Um, somebody says they might be Nessarius snail eggs. But this guy is not a Nessarius snail, although the shell looks like him. But he doesn't have that long snorkel. And um, Nessarius snails normally don't spend a lot of time on the glass unless they're laying eggs. And they also... When they lay eggs, they have a beautiful patterns to them. And uh, these are kind of boring. So I'm waiting to clean that spot of the glass. If anybody knows how long these will take to hatch, please let me know. But the rest of the tank's doing great. Um, it's just a great area for the pods and things like the snail because there's really no predators in there. If this happened in my main display with the wrasses and the tangs in there um, those things wouldn't be on the glass for more than an hour but as you can see this tank just flourishes but i'm getting to a point where the front to back dimensions of this tank are starting to bother me this um rock wall rockscape and the fact that I can't even get in between some places in the front to properly clean the glass. And I would love to get in and spread out those zoanthids and give them all, each a little more room before, you know, one takes over and the rest are struggling. So I guess that's something I need to do. And uh, changing a tank is going to be a big project, but winter is coming. So over to the main 100-gallon display, um, again, thriving, no issues, and all I've been doing is feeding when I get home from work and checking levels of the two-part and the ATO and emptying the skimmer and stuff like that. Um, found a place for my A-cans to be nice and happy over here on the side. There's uh, minimal light. I forget the par reading, but I'm going to say it's somewhere around 50 in this area. And they're just nice and fat over here. Now, as I pan over here, here's a perfect example of what I was just talking about with the zoanthids. How one of the species just takes over the rock. And on the front of that rock, there are some other species, but... That one species just really took over. And you can see my euphelia, my hammers. There's actually three different hammers in there. And it looks like one huge colony. So just all growing together. This Satosa had a little mishap. It fell off the rock. It landed on the favia below it. So it has a bad branch. But there's quite a few pieces up here. Uh, there's a couple of new pieces too. And I really didn't highlight them or spotlight them but i have been picking up a few more frags here and there and i'm probably going to run into the same overcrowded problem but i do have a frag tank now so i picked up two little acros from ocean gallery at aquatic experience um, i didn't really do any video from aquatic experience although i had a great time everybody was out you know, I got to see all my buddies, a lot of YouTube people there, and also a lot of freshwater YouTube guys were there. And that was their show. 
to be honest. I mean, it was 90 to 95% of a freshwater show. And I'm not going to say I didn't enjoy it, but my heart is in salt water. So there were just things... I couldn't get the enthusiasm that they had, and they did a great job covering it. And uh, like I said, it, it, it was their show. But there were some vendors there, and because it's in my backyard, it's right where Reefa Palooza was, you know, of course I went. And uh, had a good time. We got a bunch of the guys together, and we all went as a group, and that was pretty cool. Uh, this Hollywood stunner may be time for him to go. Although he's quite impressive looking. The only thing is I cannot get him off in one piece. He has grown onto my overflow. So it would be a lot of Hollywood stunner frags. But he is sending out sweepers. I did have a digitata mounted to the overflow box next to him. And I had to remove it. Uh, you can see the growth on the acro here. Um, this Montipora plate is just always impressive. When I did that little tank rescape, I broke a lot of pieces off. No problem, they grew right back. I'm getting a lot of color. I wish I could get a good look at that. Let me just pass the uh, red planet. I just can't capture it on photo what's happening on the base of that. And this green stunner is stunning. I mean, green slimer. <laughs> it's quite stunning that's here's a millie that um billy pipes gave me so i'm kind of babysitting it and i'll give him a piece back when his tank's ready and my clam he's always doing well i can't say great i don't see a lot of extension on the mantle and you know got a few blastos in there and the bubble tip the bubble tip is very strange in this tank. This is it in the 55. That's what a bubble tip should look like. And there's a lot less flow in here. These tanks are connected. They have pretty much the same water chemistry. Um, the par is probably similar. You know, in, in this softy tank. So I'd have to say it's either flow or just that it's crowded on the rock with two big anemones. So I keep trying to show you this red planet coral, and I just can't get the color. That's a small strawberry shortcake frag. But next to it, see how the base looks all white? It is not all white. I, there is yellow, there is blue, there is pink, there is red, and there's a big purple tang. <laughs> but it's quite impressive. Now, this purple tang that I rescued has quickly become my favorite fish in the main display. He is personable. He is always cleaning stuff. And to the point where if I take a frag, if I put my hand in there and take a frag off of one place to move it, he will come over and actually clean the frag while it's in my hand. You know, a spot he couldn't reach. So just the personality of him. And he doesn't start any trouble with anybody. Uh, just great fish. Uh, trying different different angles and different lenses to try and pick up. But no matter what I do, the base of that coral looks white. So I thought I'd try a little top down. My tank is so tall, I r rarely give you guys a top down. So I'm not very good at it, apparently. But that's the Hollywood Stunner. It's a beautiful coral. It is. It's taking up quite a lot of real estate. This actually makes me want to have a different tank that's lower so I could see more top down. Because I really couldn't even see what I was doing. I was just kind of moving the camera around on the top. I would love to just be able to look down on my tank and see this great shot here. So uh, We're always changing something. So... The next tank has to be six feet long and not as tall, and I want to be able to do the look down. <laughs> so, as you notice, except for a little bit of discolor on the sand, this tank has no algae of any kind. Coraline algae, yes, but there is no algae to be found, and I believe the tangs and foxface keep that at bay. 
the 55 gallon has a lot of bubble algae and all the systems are connected so you would think all the tanks would have the same kind of algae and the frag tank which i haven't shown you is the worst and i believe it's certain frag plugs are giving me a hair algae or almost bryopsis look at this what a disgrace so the next video is going to be about algae and i haven't forgotten about the nano build but like i said i've been busy so thanks for watching and we'll get to all of it on the next one